Russian regions in the North Caucasus are on the brink of civil war, writes The Spiegel. The ruler of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov, threatened billionaire Suleiman Kerimov, a senator from Dagestan, with blood feud. This is a continuation of the largest business conflict in modern Russia related to the Wildberries company. The divorce of the Bakalchuk spouses led to the fact that each of the founders of the company, both husband and wife, attracted influential patrons to their side. Tatiana Bakalchuk used the Dagestani billionaire and senator Suleiman Kerimov as a roof and her husband, Vladislav Bakalchuk, appealed to the ruler of Chechnya, Kadyrov. From that moment on, Kadyrov and Kerimov began their enmity. At first, there was a firefight between representatives of two Caucasian clans near the office of the Wildberries, right at the walls of the Kremlin. There were no injuries. Then the Chechen leader said that the Dagestani billionaire allegedly ordered his murder and in turn threatened him with blood feud. It is said that since then, Suleiman Kerimov has limited the radius of his movement and doubled the staff of his security. Modern Russian legislation prohibits blood feud. However, this traditional institution is still important in the Caucasus, and it is still not clear whether Chechnya and Dagestan really belong to Russia, the article noted. Despite the common history, very similar languages and cultures, Chechnya and Dagestan today are arranged in an almost opposite way. Chechnya is de facto a separate state that is practically not controlled by Moscow and its leader Ramzan Kadyrov can do whatever he pleases. Dagestan, in fact, is under the control of the federal center. The republic is mainly controlled by the FSB and Regadi and not by the head of the republic, Sergei Melikov. Melikov is 100% a person of Moscow and not a representative of local groups. However, during the conflict between Kerimov and Kadyrov, he already expressed his support for Kerimov and said that Dagestan would support its fellow billionaire in everything. Putin obviously deliberately sets the Chechens and Dagestanis against each other while supporting both and not allowing either side to lose the newspaper rights. This is a dangerous tactic for a region that is becoming increasingly militarized with more money and more weapons. It can neutralize both sides for several years, but then there is a danger that the endless Caucasian war will continue in full force. Smoke was seen rising in northern Israel on Monday from what appears to be a rocket fired from Lebanon. Israeli forces invaded southern Lebanon at the beginning of the month and have been operating in a narrow strip along the border. Israeli airstrikes have pounded large areas of the country, targeting what Israel says are Hezbollah sites. The militant group has fired thousands of rockets, missiles and drones into Israel since October 8, 2023 the day after its ally Hamas launched a surprise attack into Israel, triggering the war in Gaza. Clouds of smoke were seen rising in Gaza on Monday. These clouds were visible from southern Israel. Israeli strikes on homes in northern Gaza overnight and into Sunday left at least 87 people dead or missing, the territory's health ministry said, as a large-scale operation continued against Hamas militants said to be regrouping. The ministry said another 40 people were wounded in the strikes on the town of Beit Lahia, which was among the first targets of Israel's ground invasion nearly a year ago. The Israeli military said it struck a Hamas target. The Israeli military said it used precise munitions against a Hamas target. The US is urging Israel to press for a ceasefire in Gaza following the killing of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar last week. But neither Israel nor Hamas has shown interest in such a deal after negotiations sputtered to a halt in August. Israel ordered the entire population of the northern third of Gaza, including Gaza City, to evacuate to the south in the war's opening weeks and reiterated those instructions this month. Around 400,000 people are believed to have remained. On October 7, 2023, Hamas-led militants blew holes in Israel's security fence and stormed in killing around 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting another 250. Around 100 captives are still being held in Gaza, a third of whom are believed to be dead. Israel's offensive in Gaza has killed more than 42,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, who don't distinguish combatants from civilians. The war has destroyed large areas of Gaza and displaced about 90% of its population of 2.3 million people.